Now for months I've been eagerly anticipating the fall season. Very early into the year with just a few announcements, I could tell this would be my top pick for season of the year. From returning hits to just new and interesting ideas with great staffs behind these projects, I could just tell that this would be the defining season of 2018 and personally, for me, it is. I adore the season so much that if every other season in this year had sucked, I'd still come out smiling with a positive outlook on anime in 2018. Luckily every season has been at the very least decent, but the point stands. Usually I'd leave my top pick of the season for the end of the video, but I love Bunny Girl Senpai too much just to wait. This show is absolutely phenomenal, I'll get more into why in my full review coming out later, but to sell anyone who hasn't watched this, let me try. The series follows a man named Sokta, who gets wrapped up into supernatural anomalies with each character having to deal with an arc that relates to growing up and going through puberty, but with the issues manifesting into weird phenomena like characters disappearing from reality. And though these arcs are well written, with every character feeling human, what truly makes this not only my anime of the season but also anime of the year is the main romance between Sokta and his girlfriend Mai. The way the two act towards one another, how they both truly love one another, and how they grow, and Sokta never turns into a harem protagonist, which in any other author's hands, he would have, makes this truly special. Yet to see a beautiful love blossom, interesting arcs tackling really real aspects about growing up and finding yourself, dealing with the joys of love and the heartache of loss, surrounded by beautiful visuals and acting, watch it! and watch my review of Bunny Girl Senpai going up next week, please and thank you. I know next to nothing about sumo wrestling, I have no interest in it whatsoever, but I really enjoyed the show so far. You just really feel the passion for the sport radiate from these characters, the animation is really fun, heightening many scenes in the proper way to make a sport that I don't care about more exciting than reality, and the characters are just solid all around. I'm not a big sports guy, but I like it more in anime nowadays. But so far this has actually become one of my favorites that I've watched so far in the genre. It's a really solid sports anime overall. I plan on doing a full review for the show in the near future, but like with last episode of Season Roundup, my opinion on the show is pretty much the same. MAPPA is just an amazing studio that continuously delivers some of the strongest anime in every single year. So an idol and a zombie walk into a bar, and the bartender says, what the hell is this anime and why can't I stop watching? What started off as ridiculous and hilarious comedy, developed into emotionally gripping character-driven stories revolving around a group of girls who came back as zombies who were then forced to work as idols to save Saga. It does remain to be funny for every single episode, but these really emotional characters character-driven stories do develop the show and push it far past than just being a so funny it's okay show, but actually becoming one of the best idol anime ever made in my honest opinion. And that's not a jab at idol anime, in fact I actually enjoy idol anime from what I've seen so far. There's just something so original and creative about MAPPA's take on the comedy and these personal stories that are told here. And having Okabe's Japanese voice actor from Steins Gate yelling and having a blast is always a bonus. So I was gonna wait for Index to finish airing so I could just binge it, but I decided I couldn't wait. Overall I'm having a pretty pleasant time with season 3 and currently I've been enjoying it as much as season 2. I don't have a whole lot to say that would be that different from my review of Index, but overall I'm happy Index is back and it feels solid all around so far. I've enjoyed Jojo from part 1 up till now, but I've never been overly obsessed with Jojo. That is until now. Gang driven stories are always fun, but when you mix it with the Jojo formula, with a gang story with the most creative and over the top powers and fight scenes you can think of, hell general interactions you end up with, it, this is just the kind of Jojo part that makes me want to stand on the rooftop singing its praise. There's bound to be that one part that hits all the right notes for a fan, that nothing will ever be able to top it, and for me I'm pretty sure this is my Jojo part. I can't wait to see where it's gonna go next. A girl who can't see colors that gets to live happy days with her teenage grandma, surrounded by gorgeous visuals, PA works, to no surprise, makes it work. Maybe it's just me, but back when I was younger, still watching things like Power Rangers, but I was getting to that age where I was recognizing some of these shows that I was watching were actually pretty basic, but I was still having fun. I was hoping for a show that felt like those, but also had really good characters and a story. That's Gridman. This live action property turned anime managed to nail that giant hero fighting giant monster of the week formula so damn well, literally making the 3D in this show feel like people in rubber suits, but actually had substance to the writing behind the characters in the world. Now it won't be for everyone, but I love this, and the villain is actually pretty well rounded and interesting overall. Give me more of this trigger and less of the other one that you tried recently. I read a good chunk of this arc years back, and I wasn't that impressed with it, but I recognized that it was better than everything else up to that point for SAO. Honestly, if you remove some of the previous season's callbacks, this could actually serve as a proper introduction to SAO without much headache. It's pretty fun and doesn't step on its own toes too often. Really, when Kirito isn't around his harem, it becomes much better. Honestly, this isn't a good anime, but I can't help myself but just have mindless fun with it. There was this one 
one point in the manga that the anime won't see for a couple of seasons where it got back to the early days of Fairy Tale where it was fun and not overly bad, but Hero somehow had to mess it up. I won't cover Fairy Tale again on Season Roundup, but just know, I'm watching it, it's trash, I like it, I hate it, and I want some more of it just because I'm dumb. Ever wonder what working at a bookstore is like? Ever wonder how a skeleton would respond if he worked at said bookstore? Well, look no further than one of the funniest anime of the year. Each episode is short and to the point with very grounded but overly exaggerated scenes of the absurdity that goes on at a bookstore with some of the best visual direction you could ask for. I was a big fan of season 1, but season 2 really managed to nail this unique formula. If you look at how Jojo can only do that Jojo formula, in a similar way I think Golden Kamui invented its own kind of formula that they really refined in this season. You got treasure hunting, cooking scenes, historical lessons, and ridiculous comedy. Everything that I was hoping season 2 would be was actually achieved and then some. Dino Studio is really proving themselves to be a studio that you should be keeping an eye out for whenever you see their name in any anime season. Really everyone just needs to watch this anime as it's one of the strongest series this year. This is a criminally underappreciated short where the mech genre has more fun than you could possibly imagine. You can clear both seasons in a couple of hours and honestly if you like comedy there's no excuse not to watch it. It's not amazing or bad, it's just funny and for what it tried to be I think it nailed this formula quite well. This type of series has been done time and time again but I will give credit where it's due and the fact that they made this character reincarnate as a slime where most characters are just the same old person time and time again it does lend itself to be a bit different but since I've watched so many anime I just find myself feeling like I kind of predict where the series is going to go. I don't really have a strong opinion on this and I will say if you want to watch a show like this probably watch this one and skip out on the ones that are like that transported to another world with my smartphone. It's better than a lot of shows with a similar style in recent years I just really don't have a strong opinion on it so I'm not even going to grade it because I'm really torn on how I feel. Surprisingly, I enjoyed two sports series this season, and I really don't have a whole lot to say with this one, but the cast is fun, and I cared about the characters and somehow running entertained me. And the award for most criminally underwatched series of the season goes to this bad boy. Now this show managed to avoid most Japanese sci-fi cliches that you'd come to expect, and instead almost feels like a western sci-fi but done in Japanese animation. Episode 1 is slow, but starting from episode 2 onwards, it's a blast up to the end. The characters feel unique, they have real personalities and motives, and it's one of the most fascinating sci-fi anime I've experienced. Everyone seems to hate this one, but really I adored it, and if you're sick of sci-fi and anime, you might want to give this one a shot because it honestly feels a lot different. This actually feels like a breath of fresh air for the genre that has some interesting twists and turns, and the world is just fascinating overall. And that is it for Season Roundup. I had a blast with the fall season, and hopefully next year we'll be able to match the plethora of great anime that we received in 2018. Let me know whatever you enjoyed from this past season down in that comment section below. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy, and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me in the future. There is also my Patreon to directly fund and support what I do if you want to go the extra mile, but until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one. Also, watch Bunny Girl Senpai, please.